Makes me want to do a crown lengthening. Okay, so here it is. So here's the crown lengthening. So here's the first drill. This is our end cutting drill. Okay. You know, full gas on the pedal. You see, I'm just reducing the height. So that does out from the sides, just the tip. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes it'll leave maybe a little mark just because of the bird. It's because it's metal. And I'm making it more round. And would you say you're following the CEJ where the enamel meets the dentin? Kind of, kind of the same shape. I try as best as I can. As best as I can. It's not going to damage the tooth. Clear. Okay, so now what does this bird do? It creates a step. Yeah, I wish I saw this, this video when I was starting to do it. I was like experimenting. My teachers were showing me and holding it for me. You know, the, 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 the power of uh, watching somebody do it is, is tremendous. I'm actually learning from my own mistakes here, you know, how to do things a little bit differently. You see, this, is, this bone is very irregular. So I don't think about the thickness. I think about the height at the moment. That's the first step. Ziv, how wide mesiodistal do you go? Like how wide of an area? Line angles. Line angles. Line angles. That's it. Line, everybody knows the line angles. Tr yep. Transition between buccal and pro interproximal. That's the line angle. And it's not an exact science. You know, I'm not a robot. You know, I, I, you know, I don't prep teeth. You know, probably have less prepping skills than most dentists. But, you know, it's not that difficult. Okay. Sometimes you need to remove some of the fibers and the granulation tissue to allow you some visibility. Okay, what's important is to retract the flap. Okay, so I got the height that I wanted. Don't, uh, I'm not worried about the step. I'm going to get rid of it with the next burr. Okay, so I always start with the, with the laterals. By the way, this burr makes so much, great, so much water and, and spray. Okay, so we use, nowadays we use aerosol suctioning devices. Now, if the water doesn't hit the edge of the burr, what happens here? Take a look. It becomes right. kind of dry. It becomes kind of dry. And what does it do? It overheats the bone. So I stopped. I think I changed the burr and I changed, or I changed my electrical handpiece. Let's see. Sometimes when you see all that bone, it's overwhelming. It's so overwhelming. So let's, okay, cool, cool. Time out. Don't get overwhelmed. Reduce the height first. Reduce the height first. Reduce the height first. Don't think about the thickness. You'll deal with it later. Yeah, I, I don't like that I don't have great. Um... Oh, I know I limited the flap. Okay, you see my flap is kind of restricted here. I'm going to stop here because that, that may be confusing. That's a piece of imp information I didn't share. This patient has an implant and an implant crown here. I'm not doing crown lengthening on where the implant is. We don't want that. We the implant is that's one of the mistakes. The tooth was replaced, not thinking that the patient will have a steady crown lengthening, and that's why the implant is going to be at a certain level. So I'm I'm limiting my flap here, and it's not. Uh, otherwise, I wouldn't even struggle. I would open it all the way to the molar. Uh, 